The war on health is real, everybody. It's not a conspiracy. We just found out that the food industry has been paying dietitians to go on social media to promote things like ice cream and candy and poor food choices, making the case that they're fine to eat that way. It's okay as long as your calories are low. It's real. They don't disclose this, by the way, on social media. You just think it's a health expert. It's a nutritionist telling me that it's okay to eat ice cream. It's okay to eat candy. It's okay to eat these healthy things. I need to have a grain heavy diet. Well, looks like they're paid off. They're not real. So the war is real. They're waging a war on our health. Claim it, claim your health. You own it. Don't listen to the terrible messages. Are you getting this from your uh, Conspiracy Theorist magazine again? No, 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 I saw uh, Rob Wolf actually post what? this. Oh, it's mainstream. Yeah, it's, it's I'll, I'll read it circulating right what? now. What? Yeah, no, so the food industry, ready for this? Who's yeah. paying them, though? This yeah. is this is in the Washington Post, okay? This is going all over the place. People are losing their minds. I'm not surprised, by the way, right? I mean, I'm not surprised either at this, yeah. but I mean, I, the fact that it came out is interesting. Yeah, exactly. So the food industry pays influencer dietitians to shape your eating habits. As the World Health Organization raised questions this summer about the risks of a popular artificial sweeteners, a new hashtag began spreading on social media uh, accounts of health professionals. Safety of aspartame, right? So that's kind of mm. how it started. So um, these there was a, a registered dietitian, two and a half million followers on TikTok, talking about you know, um, you know how good it, it's fine, it's not bad for you. There's people talking about how soda is okay, it's great, it helps satisfy the desire for sweetness. And what they're not telling you is they're, they're being paid uh, by uh, Amer American Beverage. This is a trade and lobbying group that represents Coke what? and Pepsi and other companies. So they found at least 35 posts from- How a much of a scumbag do you have to right? be to like take, as a dietitian, I know. your main job is to help these people that are struggling with things like obesity- and to take money from that side to promote yeah. bullshit like that. You know, if you've been listening to the show long enough, the, you remember that we we had beef with IIFYM early uh -huh. on. We made shirts uh, about it and everything like that. I don't remember what the shirt said, but it was like F I F Y M or some yeah. shit. Or, I don't remember what we put on the shirt, but it was like- <laughs> I think remember, it said IIFYM sucks. That's what it sucks. is. That's yeah. what it was. That was actually what caught the the attention of Lane and how we met Lane Norton. The and we got time. The, the first time right. and we did all that. But we the problem that we had- and this was with our own, our own space and the influencers that were coming out and that were talking about IFYM and promoting junk food. We're basically saying, like, hey, as long as it fits in your macros, it's okay. It it's so good. Great. Yeah, it's fine. And calories, a calorie type of deal. And as long as you are, you're managing your calorie budget. And I know we had a problem with that from right out the gates, not because that's not true, but because we understand the behaviors that come with eating highly processed foods and the way these foods are engineered yep. and that all the clients that I ever trained that were struggling with weight gain, letting them eat foods like this was a terrible strategy, even if they were managing their calorie budget because the inevitable would happen. Eventually, they would get addicted to these foods or they couldn't control the cravings or they go off the deep end. Yeah, it just makes yeah. you feel like crap. It's not a great approach. It's a terrible approach. But yeah, it's, it's so with this, and you know what they say, the tip of the iceberg. This is the tip of the iceberg, okay? But what, what they found is that the trade group that I mentioned, American Beverage, paid an undisclosed amount, we don't know how much they paid, to 10 registered dietitians as well as a physician and a fitness influencer to use their social media accounts to blunt the claim that aspartame, which the study came out or the World Health Organization came out and said it may be carcinogenic. So this is the tip of the iceberg. You know, if this is, they got found out that there's going to be much, that there's much more out there. For example, they did a review and they found <laughs> 68 dietitians uh, are probably a part of this. Uh, wow. But there's got to be a lot more than okay, that. Who, Doug, who is the, the, the company? What's the name again, Sal? Uh, American Beverage. Okay. So they who, represent Coke. Yeah. Who's Pepsi. affiliated with them? Who's affiliated with them? Coke so. and Pepsi is what I read there. The, but the, the big ones? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Much more. Wow. Right? And then think about what Coke owns. Bunch of soulless wow. dietitians out there. Huh? Did you see that? Uh, did you, I think Jackie shared it in our group uh, today. I think actually when she shared it was the, the AI generated Coke. Oh yeah. The flavor. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like the new See what that is? Uh huh. I wonder I what's going to, how they're going to, you know, how, what, how, what AI used, what metrics or data it used to create a flavor. That's that what I, be, okay. So that was, I was trying to wrap my brain around the same huh. thing too. Did you take, did, do you think AI took uh, all the most popular beverages and then mixed the flavors together or like what? I mean, no, what? I did that when I was a kid. It didn't taste good. Yeah. You guys do that when you're a kid? Oh, of you course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, what it pro I I'm guessing, but I'm assuming AI took the most popular beverages, tried to find what's in common 
It probably went through what we know about palatability um, and tried to formulate, like food scientists do, something that's... Um, the video made it look like a cotton candy flavor. That's what it looked like to me. Oh, that's mm. tough. To, Which, to turn down. That's, that's, that's my favorite. Cotton candy soda? <laughs> Why is there not a cotton candy soda? It's a good question. I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's, it's Does, it, has anyone tried to, to do that? Yeah, I all don't the think so. Drinks. They've done grapes. I mean, they've done almost anything. Yeah, yeah. they've done the cotton candy grapes, which yeah. are to die for, by the way. Yeah. 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 If you've not had cotton candy grapes, that's, that's like, crazy. that is amazing. What's, so this is what's, what's crazy about this is that um, they've been influencing the information that we get for a long time. This is not new, okay? It's not new. They've influenced uh, government policy and regulations and what the messaging comes from government. They've influenced what goes into, back in the day, magazines, TV oh, yeah. shows, news articles. Social media is just an extension of that. So how are they going to control social media? It's so much the more American decentralized. Heart Association. I mean, yeah. like institutions they've influenced, education they've influenced, yeah. food pyramids yeah. they've influenced. I, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Um, and this, I posted this and it flew because I think it really resonates. Science is objective. Scientists are not. So you yeah. can have objective data, but the people presenting it are still human. They could still be influenced. They could still be corrupted. Just like all these dietitians who are paid. And now I know what they're probably justifying it by saying, well, we have data to show this. And I guess if you, and so they're maybe making themselves feel better, but it's, it's terrible. It sucks because it puts consumers in this position where they're like, what do I believe? Yeah. Like, who do I trust? It's just you know? snake oil at that point. So much. It's now, so terrible. Does it, okay. So does it get you mad because it's the inevitable, this is going to happen, right? Like if you, yeah. you, you're, we, we live in a, a capitalist society. You yeah. have the ability to, to pay, to lobby, to out compete, to advertise yeah. and market. Uh, it, it's almost like I, I have a hard time because it's, it's almost dumb for them not to do it too. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you if you're in if you if you know how how powerful social media is, yeah, you know they how should powerful, always get backlash though. They should always get a slap, you know, for for doing the wrong thing. I mean, sh should they get a slap, or is it, is this purely just like the better information should outcompete it? I I mean, how do you so here's the deal? So that's why I'm I mean, careful I mean, about in like terms how fired the, up I get over it. Because, in terms of the consumer, I'm saying not in terms of regulation. Yes, I get I get fired up, but that doesn't make me say um, regulate shut it all down or regulate it. I would rather have fifty thousand sources of information that I can sift through than one. Yeah. That is controlled. That's what it oh, used okay, to be. I get what you're, so you're so uh, okay. I okay. I can get behind that. I'm more mad at World Health Organization I'm, than I than I, I am. I'm just at, I'm just mad that this this is just human that's, nature. That, that's a that's a body that we're we're paying to regulate shit as it yeah. is. And if, they, if you're not doing a good job of doing yeah. shit like oh, that, I mean, they, they, there's so much there. They lost my trust a long time yeah. ago. Look, here's it's a, a whole deal. other podcast. I, I um, this is human nature. Okay, yeah. and I think it's better today than it was in the past because at least we have, you know, we have the ability to put our voice out there. There's lots of people out there that are now presenting good information. I think people are more informed, or at least at the very least, have more access to good information. You know, before, when they controlled and put out terrible information, you had like two sources. Yeah. So if you couldn't get through the gatekeepers, you couldn't put your stuff out there. Mind Pump wouldn't exist 30 years ago if we were going to be put on a magazine or have to go through official government, you know, um, whatever the decree is or whatever the message is. So at least today you can find the right information. It just annoys me because it's still happening. But look, it got found out, and if, and and we know yeah. who these people are, and there's more that are out there like that. You know. Well, it just I mean, I guarantee you they thought that they weren't ever going to get found out. You know, and, that, and that's sort of the motivation behind it. It's like I can take, you can or just make ju just justifications for yeah presenting this information out there because you can kind of spin it. Uh, but that's the thing on the consumer. To me, it's like if. If you see corruption and and you see like uh, deliberate lies uh, and and persuasion like that, you have to stop following these people. Do you okay? Remember we talked like a, a while back, and I I was telling you guys some of the stats on like social media, like that. You know, are we going to see like the decline of it? Yeah. Like we've already seen the peak, and it's going to slowly start to. And maybe it won't die completely, but it's going to get less and less popular, or like less like more and more people are aware of the how addictive it can be. More and more people are aware of like false news that's yeah, coming out. How the like algorithm this. could be toxic. Yeah, yeah. exactly. How mm -hmm. the algorithm could be toxic. So you have more and more movements around, you know, consuming less social media. Do you think we've already reached the 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 peak power of it and it's actually going to go the other direction? Or do you think it's going to get more powerful? 
Today's program giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. This is a bodybuilder-minded program. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale right now. MAPS Symmetry and the RGB Bundle, both half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Oh, I think with AI, it's going to get really, it's going to get way worse. Yeah. I think AI is going to be way smarter and way more subtle in uh, how it manipulates people and how it can be used. So no, I don't think it's, I don't think we've hit the peak. Yeah. Oh, really? No. I do think the curtains like uh, coming, like opening up a little bit more in terms of some of this fuckery that's out there. Yeah. So I think, I think we hit peak. I think we've hit peak. I think uh, you, all you're seeing now too is like things like threat, like just, they're all starting to out compete with each other. For more more attention, more eyeballs, more people are becoming aware of it. I think I, AI is actually only going to make us more skeptical. Yeah. I think more like as this is coming out. I mean, I've already had this happen. It just happened to me just the other day. Like uh, just, I think Justin like rained on my parade. I was like looking at these <laughs> sick ass like houses. Yeah. I'm like, bro, look at this. We gotta go visit this. And he's like, bro, that's AI. It's not even a real place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like what? I was I like, uh, I was googling it like all day, like trying to find out why I want to go find this place in Italy where I want to go travel. I only knew to. that because I did the same thing. Like <laughs> I saw a few properties. I was like, oh my god, is this like an Airbnb? Let's yes, go. I was searching for like it literally, was totally I was, fake. I was, I was totally, totally yeah, it's fake. just a, it's just AI generated cool places. Aren't you seeing? Okay, it's super popular right now. Okay, you it's saw you saw Messi's house uh, the yeah. other day. They just did Ronaldo Those in Saudi fake. Arabia. Yeah, they're all fake. Yeah, yeah. they're all AI so generated, just rendered. Yeah. So, but there was like ones that would look like short term rentals, and that was like searching oh. everywhere. Well, you know, for like hours, like, you know those AI, this place? You know those AI influencers uh, getting followers. Yes, you have. So, I don't yeah. you think that? So here's as here's, more people become aware like that. Like now, I'm, I'm so skeptical. I see something cool, and I I first default to well, it's that, not real. Well, that's okay. Yeah. So just like your BB thing. Here's <laughs> it's not <laughs> <That> real. <laughs> real. You got to prove me otherwise. That was not real. real. Yeah, there's I a, had your back. Listen, that. there's a dude, and he literally did it with slow camera. He they shot a pellet gun at him, and he cut the pellet in half with the samurai sword it's real it's a real video anyway yeah. we'll put it up for people to watch for themselves Probably anyway no no that was real <laughs> listen you're the most skeptical person here i always got to break your balls about yeah. this but look do you now see just how do you think this is or do you see now how deep this is the game or do you still think it's like a few people and everything's great <laughs> <laughs> No, I never. I actually. Who said, are I, they? My point yeah, was, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, like, my point was that it's not just a few people. Nobody's ever going to answer that. I, I don't think it's a few people. I don't. I don't think there's like somebody at the top who's like colluding for no, what's happening. Think I think mm -hmm. it's we have a very corrupt, moralist world that a lot of people have a lot of money and power, and when a lot of people that have like have no moral compass. So then, so, and, th and that's why I think it looks like it points, not to get all like crazy and biblical, but that's why it looks like it all points to like a Satan right. or a bad person. Right. When, when everybody throws the out lines of the Anunnaki, when, when everybody throws out, you know, morals Continue. and values, or they, or they worship things like power and money. And that's, that is their God, or that is their main focus or this, or thyself, then you're going to get this like, yeah. oh, it looks like. Yep. It's all being right. And one could probably make the case if you're like a spiritual person that you would say like it is. Satan is at the top of this. These are all the people sure. that are that are colluding for him. But I, I just don't think it's working that way. I think this is what happens when you dismiss those values. And then so all these bad things look like they're so aligned yeah. together. That's my theory. Yeah, I no, don't I, think it's fucking three bad dudes with lots no, of money going. No. I think in some <laughs> case, well, I think in some cases it might be like that, but I, I, I agree with you actually. So here's why I think it's going to get worse. Can we because, clip that right there? Huh? Can we clip that right there? <laughs> it's the only time I've ever yes, said this. Like every time he says Andrew, something, please. I agree so, with you. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just use that clip. on repeat. Can, please tell the guys I want to make that a ringtone. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, Adam. I agree with you. You're right, Adam. You're right, Adam. So I think, so here's the deal. Uh, this is my fear. Well, fear, I think this was going to happen. We went from very trusting. Oh, this is the official message. This is real. Government says this. News says this. It's, this is what's happening. Yeah. To, uh-oh, we're not trusting things. To, we trust nothing. When you trust nothing, that's also not good. We've got to have yeah. an example of this, don't you think? There's got to be a, 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 an example in history where, where we all uh, believed one way or we took a source as true or and and then eventually distrust came and then eventually we, we either dismissst it or we just like scoff at well, it. Well, right? there's got to be an example of well, that history. Well, if you look at the when people explain kind of the, what happened in the Soviet Union, um <laughs> it, they would change the official information so much and there were so many spies, so mm. so many people that would report well, what was North happening. Korea. 
around you, right? So there were so many people that would report that what was around you that people stopped. They just were like, all right, what, what do I believe now? Right. Just tell me what to say and yeah. what to believe. And then they would keep things to themselves or within very close. So orders. is that your fear is that we get so much distrust and disbelief and all this stuff that's being put out all the time. And that we just completely hand it over. That we just state. submit. That, that we go, we go, that's, that's North please, Korea, dude. please somebody tell us yes. how, what to believe because we are there's going too much to, fake stuff. We are going oh to, God. we are going to demand. That's so un-American. Listen, we're going to, we are going to demand for an arbitrator of truth. When it gets so crazy that we can't trust anything, that AI is making videos, they're putting out information, people are going to say, we need a seal of real, of, of authenticity. And who's going to do that? Government. Mind pump. And then it's going to be like, watch the video. Oh, that doesn't have the authenticity seal on it. I don't believe it. Only the things that are go through this governing body mm. are going to be what I believe. That's my fear. That it's yeah. going to all, it's going to go super decentralized all the way back to So the only reason why I don't think of that, because I think so much of the distrust comes from the government already. So I, I think that so many people already, or not come from, but people, so many people distrust the government already that them deciding the, you know, who's authentic seal or the governing body, I feel like they're the first people that are going to be like, hell no, not them. So, I mean, what would make you think that with all this distrust, all this bullshit that we see even in the whole political landscape, what's happened in the last three years, that and we we're all seeing all this like oh I don't believe I don't know what to believe oh by the way hey government could you tell us what to or could you hire a a, a governing body to tell us what's real and what's because that, that still wins it still wins especially really? during times of of massive uncertainty and fear people will still look if if the if shit went down right now uh, it wouldn't be hard to convince people to want martial law it wouldn't be hard for people to say yes. Spy on everybody. It's already happening. Spy on everybody. Yes, take all the weapons away. God, we need some law and order. Just control it all. Um, you know, do it for us because it's scary. I think when the information's so you distrust everything, you'll want that. You'll want something to be able to rest your, I guess, your trust on. And I think we're going to demand it. And then we'll feel like it's in, under our control because we can vote for the people. You know, type of deal. That's that's my big fear. But. Here, this is where we're at now. Where we're at now is this. It's still happening. And in fact, it's it's uh, more pervasive and they're getting smarter with it. I mean, look at the messaging around meat and how we continue to hear this message mm -hmm. that meat is unhealthy for you. It's That's so wrong. It's not even it's funny. Crazy. And now you think, why? Well, because if, if you don't eat meat, you're going to buy their products that they can patent. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. The bottom line is, if they could patent meat, they would have by now. If you could have a cow and be like, this is mine, and you can't sell this meat anymore, th then they wouldn't be selling this message. So we're still in this weird, I don't know, it's, it, it's strange. Right. But it's annoying because these are dietitians. So imagine you as a, as, or imagine us putting out a message. Yeah, it's, it's like super dirty, bro. Like the Imagine I put out a message and then someone listens to what I said and say, yeah, but this registered dietitian said this. And now I got to counter this registered dietitian. That's I mean, obviously we've had that We've had that challenge right. our whole career, right? With, I, that's with, why it's so frustrating. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I anyway. get it. Okay, so while we're sticking with crazy, you guys have been waiting to talk about this because I didn't know until five minutes ago or whatever, the uh, the fake aliens that we have now. What is this all about in Mexico? Oh, oh. yes, yeah, so they're having a hearing. <laughs> I know you fools would be all over right <laughs> yeah. away, so... This yeah, it was, Congress. Yeah, it was so it was presented in front of Congress. So it's yeah. not like they're acknowledging that these are real. They're they're investigating the evidence that's being presented to them. And so this is like kind of a process they're going through. I think we went through this with like UAPs or whatever, and they started yeah. to kind of look at a lot of information that we actually have gathered and data points if, if aliens exist or not. Two mummified alien bodies. Yeah. There was three, I thought I saw no, two okay. brothers. Two. There's two, and if you look at them. Uh, it looks fake as fuck. It to me. looks like a tiny ET. Like literally, they watched ET and then they made like a paper mache. Yeah. Yes, it looks guy. like a. It looks like a sixth grade kids science project. <laughs> well, it looks like to they me. CT scanned them and saw skeletons in. Yeah, them and there's like or organs or... inside them. Yeah. So where's now, the DNA test? Now, well, here's well, here's why they're calling it a hoax because the same people that presented it were already caught in a previous hoax. Oh. <laughs> Okay, and really? also, okay, here's another good point. So they got them from Peru, uh, apparently from a cave. This is a story, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah. And so they they transported them to Mexico. How do you get across w without like that being investigated? Like, Did you see this, Doug? Would that make this your illegal? first time seeing it, too? Alien? They would what, be illegal aliens. aliens yeah, yeah I, I saw them yesterday, yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, but- They're cute. They're cute. 
Wow. It, uh, dude, come on. How do you hide those, you know, going through customs is, is my point. So now the claim, it's all claims. So far, there's nobody doing, like you said, DNA test or anything like that, right? From what, from, is that true, Justin? Because I think it's- Yeah, there's no DNA test. Yeah, yeah, no, I saw, they didn't I present any of that. That was the first thing I wanted to see. Dude. So- I, that looks just like so fake. It me. looks like the one from Men in Black, the one that's like you know, yeah. like driving. Well, I mean, it's, a it's body. mummified. Have you ever seen a mummy? They don't look real either. Have you seen a real mummified well, human? Yeah, I mean, that also looks not real. Dried out, but I mean, look how tiny that little guy is. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, they might not be big. That's so weird. It's not. It's so weird. It's you know, it's even more weird. All this stuff happening right now. That's well, weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what are, well, what, I'm always like, what are we? You know, what are we missing out there? What's happening that's a lot bigger? that uh, they're shifting our attention dude, from speaking of which dude, my wife you know dude she she screwed up big time so she got me <laughs> in a prank really good uh, oh you're uh, saying this no, no. and the reason why she screwed up yeah, is she's going to get it back you never like ladies i'm just ladies listening right now don't start a prank war with a guy <laughs> because we're the worst at it yeah. we just this is why i don't it's do one of the, it's usually one of the things we do really out. well yeah. We just, I don't. This is why we don't prank each other because we yeah. know what'll happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll Dead get animals, so it'll poop, escalate fast. Yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no limits. Yeah, it'll escalate. There's really no fast. limits. Those, but, those are like the go-to buttons. But listen, how she got me though. She got me so good, right? So we were outside. We're, we're with the kids, and I don't remember what I was going to get on her phone. I was going to send something for her. So I'm like, oh yeah, what's your passcode again? She tells me. I enter. I'm like, doesn't work. She's like, no, it's that. And I tried it again. And it didn't work. So then she gets her phone. Obviously, her face opens it. And I'm like, but your passcode didn't work. She's like, that's my passcode. So she closes it, tries it open again. She's like, what the hell? Tries it again. And it locks the phone. I think it locks it initially for like a minute or two minutes. So now I'm like looking at her like kind of sideways, like, is that really your passcode? Are you trying to hide something? She's like, no, I swear to God. So then she's going and she tries it over and over again. She's like, that's been my passcode forever. I did remember it after she told me that it was her passcode and it wouldn't work. So she locked herself out again. So now she's getting really frustrated and like, what the hell happened? A couple days earlier, her phone had just randomly shut off and then restarted itself. She didn't do anything to it. She shut, it just turned off, turned back on. So she's like, is this a glitch? Like, this is so weird. So she tried it again. And again, this is the passcode she's had in her phone for years. Doesn't work, doesn't work, locks it, lock, eventually gets locked out for an hour. Now she's pissed off. She's like, I need my phone. I have to go to this appointment tomorrow. I don't remember the address. I got to do this thing tomorrow. Like, what's this is so crazy. So we go online. And we look up, like, my passcode isn't working. Of course, what does it say? Did you remember your actual passcode? No type of deal. She's like, that was it. This is weird. So we're going through and it says, oh, if you updated your phone, some people who updated their phone might have a glitch and it's not working. So here's what you got to do. And you got to restart the phone and wipe it clean. And if it's backed up, thankfully, then you can, you know, get it back on or whatever. So she's going through this. Meanwhile, she's talking about all this weird stuff that's been happening on her phone. Like, yeah, it turned off. And then the other day, like an app opened when it wasn't supposed to. Meanwhile, when we're trying to do it, we had to connect it to our laptop. A couple like tabs opened up on their own. So now I'm like, my cackles are up a little bit just because that's always what happens, right? So I'm like, what? She's, you know, and she's pissed off. <laughs> so then we're sitting there and she was trying to, to, to restart it or set it to factory settings. And for whatever reason, the way we were doing it, which was recommended by Apple, wasn't working and she would get the like the pinwheel of death you know that just spins mm -hmm. forever yeah so this is happening i'm like what the hell so she comes and sits down next to me and i'm like just wait let's see if it fixes itself let's just let it happen so we're sitting there while she's sitting next to me i get a text it's from her phone i open it up and it says uh this is the u.s government we have possession of your wife's phone and data and we're going to be reviewing it. Okay. <laughs> so I look at it. <laughs> wow, dude. This is elaborate. You're elaborate as so well, bro. At it, and I'm like, and I look at her like, what? And she's like, what does it say? And I read it to her. And I'm like making this face, right? She starts cracking up. <laughs> I'm like, you. Now. What she do? Go get on her laptop and do it? What did she do? So the whole thing wasn't the prank. That actually happened. Oh, okay. So that locked. she was on her phone. But she was on the she computer. Went on her computer yeah, smart. to fuck with me. Yeah, yeah. So there was like a 30 oh, second period that's there hilarious. where my heart kind of jumped and I'm like, that obviously it's pretty good. on her. That's a good one. Yeah, dude. that is a good one. She's cracking up. And I'm like, I looked what is she going to do to him? I don't even bro, know. She, she's yeah. so fucked. I'm going to get her back so bad. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's going to be bad. <laughs> you something sucker. bad is going to happen. That's a good uh, one. Talk about knowing uh, you really well to know that that would be something that we would do. Dude, I told her, I'm like, I'm going to terrify you so bad. Yeah, I told her. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just gets worse. It escalates like <laughs> with guys. You, the yeah, U.S. You government has it. your wife's phone. Dude. dude. <laughs> 
It's going to be bad, bro. Yeah. She's going to come out one day and go to the store. Car's gone. Where's my car? Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> let, let the prank last like two days, you know? Yeah. Uh, I got we'll I got all kinds of heat yesterday because I did the uh, I did the day in the life, right? on the Which, by the way, I was so late to that. I felt so bad. I'm like, oh my. Of all the reminders. I'm never late on that stuff. Yeah. And I've, I, I totally fucked up. They yesterday. only reminded you twice. Yeah. yeah I, know, right. I was getting DMs. Where are you? Yeah, Who's so. doing it? I did day in the life and I did a bunch of questions and stuff like that. And um, somebody asked me, what are red flags uh, with uh, body hiring a bodybuilding or a men's physique or bikini coach? Uh, did you call out a bunch of people? Well, I well I pretty much called out everybody in this case because I know that every single coach does this. And this is what started the backlash. And I said that, um, you know, a quick red flag, or the easiest red flag is that they put you on cardio right away when you start prep. First mm, thing out the gate, everybody, yeah, every and like I got so many. It was like, what? That's what, and like, of course, every. And, my, and I said, I did another clip that was laughing. I said, I knew that was going to rile everybody up, but it's the truth. I said, and then just earlier that day, Grace Barga, who we've talked about already, is in her prep. She's yeah. two weeks out from her show. Did you see her her in body scan? No, <sighs> bro. Okay. I mean, she looks shredded. That picture that you, oh, she's, you brought she, up. The last she part. is now ten uh, percent body fat. Oh wow! Yeah, so she is shredded. She has lost twenty pounds. One pound of muscle. That's one pound. That's it. By the way, zero wow. fucking cardio. Do you know how? Yeah, zero By the cardio. Way, do you know how impossible that is for, is for black so, belt. Right yeah, there. that is. That's and she's like, natural. That's the dream. Okay, natural, no cardio, twenty pounds off the scale, and has yeah. lost. One pound of muscle yeah. in that, and journey. she was already fit and lean. Yeah. It's not like yeah. she went. That's Bro. crazy. And that I mean, that's insane. And no cardio. Yeah. So it's so awesome. I mean, she's to, protected her metabolism. She's protected her hormones. The after show post contest, it's not going to be this crazy terrible rebound. She's not in a position where she's like doing so much cardio and eating so little. Do you know what her calories are at? She is around, two, I want to say... Don't tell me over 2,000 calories. Oh, yeah, she's over 2,000 calories, Christ. dude. You know how many women right now listening? She's not a big girl. She's tiny. Do you know how many women listening right now can't believe what you're saying? Yeah. Why? I told you, my last client that I actually helped uh, was Melissa Wolf. And she, I got her up to, when we first when she first hired me, she was eating 1,600 calories, normal, not ready for prep, not doing that was her normal just her normal eating. We worked all the way up to 28 or 2,900 calories, when she hit stage and got on and won, she was eating 2,200 calories. Yeah. Wow. So she was literally that much higher on her calories. How annoying is it when people say you can't speed yeah. up your metabolism? Yeah, you no, can't it's so stupid. Off. Yeah, no way. Oh, is that where she's at? How is this not that influencing? Oh, yeah, so right around 2,000 wow, calories. Wow, look at that. 144 grams of protein. This is contest diet. Yeah. This is her contest yeah, yeah, diet. Yeah, yeah. And at the end, this is her at the like, so This is when everybody's unhealthy. 144 grams of protein, 244 grams of carbs, 41 grams of fat. No cardio whatsoever, just strength training. Mom of how many kids do you have? Two, three? three? Yeah. Insane. Insane. That's so good. It's po I mean, you could do it if you do it right. Well, you, so, you do okay, <clears throat> of course, I got all kinds of people asking questions and, and DMs after this and, and going around. So one of the reasons, and I, and in defense of the, the, the coaches that I know I'm going to piss off and that I'm sure yeah. they, got, they now have all their clients that are <laughs> fucking messaging them, why did my bump Adam say this and you did yeah. this to me? Okay, the... A lot of these Gotta coaches, that's their, their their business is, is is this. It's completely around competitors. And 90% of people that want to compete for a show, this is the way they do it. They get together with their girlfriend or their buddy, and they're like, hey, you know, be sick. Let's do a show. Like, okay, let's look at dates. Okay, yeah. there's one coming up in November. All right, let's let's see who can get the most shredded. And they, and they do it like that, right? They pick a show date, and then they're like, okay, I'm going to hire a coach. Who's the best in the business? They hire someone. They're like, hey, can you get me ready for the show? Now, the coaches, because they need the money and that's their business, say, okay, and they take them on. But the truth, and I never did this, right? Because I didn't need, you know, coaching these people. That wasn't a major part of my business. It was a thing that I did to help people out because I was competing. My deal was no, I I will not. I will never. You can never hire me for a show that you have picked, because the the real the real prep for a show happens in the off season, in the in the metabolism right. in the metabolism that you build and the body that you build happens in the off season, yeah. so that when you go into prep. You can still be in a healthy place and you're you're in a place that will even allow you to get as shredded as you want to get because a lot of these girls come in and they're already eating they're only eating 1600 calories and they want they want a 16 week diet. Yeah, right? and they want to get ready in 16 weeks for a show. It's like no, it's not happening. It's not happening. 
So what happens is a lot of these coaches, and then they're only, they have to put these girls on crazy hours of cardio in order for them to lose or lean out because their their metabolism is already so slow. And then you know what they do is they use anabolics to try their hardest to preserve muscle, even though they still lose muscle. Yes. Because all they do, this is what they do. They have two buttons, more cardio and exercise, eat less, more cardio and exercise, eat less. And then there's that third button of let's add some drugs as you're losing too much muscle. And it's terrible. It's no wonder these these girls come out with their hormones ruined and screwed up and they rebound with fat gain. That's insane. 20, 30 pounds in the month or two post-show. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And they feel their emotions. They feel their body is terrible. Um, and, and, and by the way, this is why there's a self-selection bias for people with severe body dysmorphia and eating dysfunction because the only people that would go through that all the way through already have dysfunctional relationships yeah. or they develop one yep. in order to continue because a rational, non-dysfunctional state of mind would say, this is crazy. This doesn't feel good. I'm going to stop right now. And there's a lot of people that do that, by the way. They yeah. start oh, and they yeah. go, oh, wait, this isn't great. This isn't good. I feel terrible. So for men and women, you, you should never go into a prep until you have got your place, got yourself in a place of uh, at least... 800 to a thousand more calories yeah. than, than where you want to land for, for the show. And you want to be in that's a, your buffer. Yeah. And you want to be in a reasonable body fat percentage. You don't want to go in and you, you have to lose 10% or 15% body fat to get ready for a stage. And you're on top of that. You're already at like moderate calories. Yeah. It's like, so I could eat, like when someone would, would present their, all their information to me and tell me what they want to get ready. I could look at it and go like, Oh yeah, no, you're not in a good place. Like you're just, I don't, you know, even though you, you don't have runway. Yeah, yeah. You need to have that. And and even if I could get you there through all these crazy means of taking drugs and putting you on lots of cardio, just to get like, I am setting you up for so much failure. Your and integrity hardship won't allow later. you. It reminds me of plastic surgeons. You ever see, uh, like they have celebrities and they have like, like crazy. <laughs> what's the last person? Kathy Griffin. Have you seen what she looks like? Her, yeah. Her sanity? yeah. And you think, I can imagine who keeps operating on these people? Yeah. Doctors with no integrity. Yeah. You, you think Michael Jackson's doctor at some point, you, you don't think they know, well, like, this guy's crazy. We should not remember do Remember the guy that, like, self proclaimed Ken doll guy? Yeah. Like, and he went through and kind of had to shop a lot of doctors because a lot of them turned him away. Yeah. Because you'd, it was like thousands of operations he's had. Yeah. You know, to you'll get find there. one to, that'll, like, that'll take the money. You're an addict. You know? You know? Yeah. I know. I know. It's crazy stuff. Anyway, I want to ask you, Adam, because I just learned this. I didn't know you were doing this. You kept it to yourself, which is cool. That you've you have not had any cannabis for almost a month. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Yeah, I shut it down completely. Now, so. what made you stop? I so I, you were less cool. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> his memory was hella sharp. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. what's going on? No. So you know, I I always knew that it's boring um, these days. I knew that once. Well, first of all, I, I, this is part of also what made me even leave the cannabis industry. Like I knew that one day I would have a family, and I'm like, I don't have to explain to my kid, you know, about I don't want to have to, I don't want to have a conversation about marijuana uh, well before the average person has to have a conversation right, right, about right. marijuana. So I always knew that I was going to move away from that industry when I did, as as good as it was to me. Um, so that was the, the 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 reason why that originally happened. And then I knew at one point too my son would come to an age where I also didn't want him to smell it or see it or, sure. you know what I'm saying? And, and to get to the place where he started asking questions, I actually thought that was going to be later than what it was. And I had a moment, I don't know if I shared this with you guys. I know I haven't talked about it on the podcast, but it like, it like, like hit me right in my heart, dude. And this was like about, I don't know, about eight months or so ago. So it's been on my mind for a while where uh, it, I don't, so typically I don't smoke until he goes to bed. That was kind of my, my routine is at night before, you know, before we go sure. to bed or I watch a little bit of TV with Katrina. And not in front of him or anything like oh, that. Oh, never, yeah. never, 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 never has he ever seen me do anything like that yep. or even yep. it's been in the house where he, I, outside, right before, right before bed or watch movie. Occasionally though, if it's like, especially if Katrina's family, cause her brother's smoking and stuff are at my house and it's like a Saturday and we're barbecuing or doing something like that. Like I'll, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll take a couple hits outside with them while I'm, while I'm doing stuff. Right. And I had a time like that it was like a Saturday and we were barbecuing and if all families over and stuff like that, and the brothers and I took a couple hits around the corner, no big deal. Right. And like, and literally like maybe a half hour later, I'm in the house and I'm playing with Max. And we're, we're, we're messing around and he stops and he, and he looks at me and he goes, what's wrong, daddy? And I'm like, what, nothing. What's wrong? And he's like, your eyes are hurting. Oh, he goes, your, your eyes are hurting. No. And I go, and I'm like, no, no, 
no, I'm not totally like in denial of it like that. And he's like, I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? He goes, they're red. Ooh. Why are they hurting? What, what happened? Why are they hurting? I was like, oh, fuck. I was oh, like, oh, my no. God. <laughs> Never thought that that would happen. Like Because he's, he's, he's young. Of course. Oh, wow. Of course. And so that was the beginning for me to be like, okay, like uh, this is going to happen sooner than I thought it was going to happen. So and, are you trying to quit mm -hmm. quit? Yeah, you know, I'm like, like I mean, forever. I mean, or I like, like if you go out with the, your yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm gonna quit at home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not, like, I've notoriously, you know, I've always, especially since I've been in this space, I mean, I have, I keep, you know, mason jars of my favorite strains yeah, yeah, and yeah. I have like a nice, real nice setup right. of all this stuff that I keep on hand where I just won't, wow, good for I won't, you, I won't keep it on hand anymore. I, and then, I'm, I'm trying to do something similar, I think, right now. It's, yeah. it's, um, you know what it is? It's not a very, I know some people have, um, like a withdrawal and stuff like that from cannabis. That's not a super big issue um, for me. I think it's just more that you just get in the habit of like, this is how I wind down Yeah, type mm -hmm. of deal. Mm -hmm. So are you, are, do you have any withdrawal issues? I actually didn't. Um, no I, weird dreams. I know, I know, well, yeah, that's been like crazy. Yeah, vivid like, Because I'm used to having it right before bed. I used yeah. it as like a sleep, almost like a sleep aid. So I did, I did go through a little bit of uh heart, like a harder time falling asleep mm -hmm. and like not as good as sleep because I've used that as like a sleep aid for so long, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't like any, it wasn't. You could like try. Big... Um, so ashwagandha will help us with uh, some of the withdrawal symptoms. Oh, uh, really? The, yeah. Organifi green juice actually. So that's got ashwagandha. It's also got cordyceps. Now, does it matter when I like it? it Cause I would normally do green juice if I, and I haven't been consistently, but if I were to use the green juice, I would normally just do it in the day. Yes. But does it not matter if I do it in the day or right before bed? Use it daily. I'm not going to get a, a benefit. No, more. no. Use it every day. Okay. Daily. Okay. And what'll help is it'll help the body uh, regulate, re-regulate its stress system. Cause that's what cannabis does. Cannabis affects the endocannabinoid system has a lot of, um, it has a lot of uh, things that it's responsible for in the body or that it influences. One of them though, is the way that the body regulates stress. And so when you take it away, your stress mechanisms can be thrown off a little bit. And this is when people will start to feel maybe some of the, the withdrawal effects. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the stuff that's in the green juice, which includes the ashwagandha helps f more quickly regulate those. Or oh, that'll it. be interesting. Yeah, I will. I, I will. Cause I've been actually really inconsistent with that. I'll kick that. And I like that anyway. So I'll kick that back up and see if I, I notice some positive benefits from it. Luckily that, you know, it's never been like a real hard thing for me. I've talked on the show many times yeah. how I would, I would intentionally cycle off for like a week or so always. Mm. Um, but this time it was, the intent was to, to pretty much quit. Like yeah. I, again, I'm also not going to tell myself like, Oh, I'm never going to, it's like not that big of a deal. Yeah, for how me. It's crazy like, is that, man? When yeah. you have kids, this is why I tell people when you have kids, you're either forced to become a way better person or, yeah. or I guess what, what what's the other option? Nothing. Cause yeah. they will, without even trying, he's just, Oh yeah. That was yeah. just, I was, I was so not ready for that at all. You and can try and deny it. Didn't even like cross right in front of your face. Dude, I had, a, even yeah. I had an mind. issue last night. So my, my, my uh, Aurelius is, he loves to talk, right? I don't know where he gets it from, but he loves to talk. <laughs> And uh, I'm tired, right? Weird. So, I know. We're watching TV, and so everybody always complains. My kids, all my everybody complains when we watch movies because I talk during movies. Oh my god, it's such a that's so annoying. I know that's such yeah. an annoying trait, bro. Yeah, know, <laughs> it's an annoying. You trait. know, because you watched it. With <laughs> oh my god, I'll comment. Yeah. Wait for this part. It's gonna happen. <laughs> no, not even that. Just it's just, just first, talking. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, he does it too, right? But he's too. So his stuff is always like, why? Why did this happen? Well, why did that happen? And we're going on and on and on. And I'm, it's last night we're watching TV and it's late and he's doing that and doing that. And I'm kind of placating him, but you know, I think we underestimate our kids ability to know that we're not like that. We're actually getting You're not away. really interested. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm like, you know, talking to him and kind of like placating him and he's saying, why, well, why, well, why? And then finally he looks at Jessica and he goes, I think I'm talking too much. <laughs> and he gets real quiet, but it's sad, bro. It's so yeah, sad. It's I sat a little there. Self awareness. Oh, though, my dude. heart yeah. crushed because uh, hey, he's got to pick up on the social dude, cues. And I dude. felt so bad. I sat there and I'm like, oh, because I don't want him to feel like his dad doesn't want to. Well, like, no, but, no, that's not a bad. That's it's not, not bad. Yeah, it's just, it's just social cues. That's not bad. Yeah, I think that's actually really cool. It's kind of cool that he actually yeah, he's picked aware. up on. Still though, you know what I mean? Because there's gonna be well, a day when he's not gonna want to talk to me. Yeah, yeah, like half the time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that's so. I we're going through this phase again. Um. You know, I had it. I had it when he was two. So you know, uh, I think most moms uh, are have had this. And Katrina always tells this story that like it wasn't that way in our family. It was I, I got this where your child around that like one and a half to two and a half range, they become like they you can't leave the room. 
You know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. get out. You they, they follow mom everywhere. And Ma so Max did that with me. Like I could not leave. It was he was super oh, tied was to you, unbelievably tied to me. And it was like oh, so nice when he hit about three. He finally kind of like relieve it. We're going back to that again. But it's not like when he was a baby. It was mm. like cry and freak out. He just he wants to play and wants to be yeah. on my hip like everywhere we go. And so. Literally, when I come home, so my sister, you guys know, was in town right for the last yeah. couple of days, which was so nice because he loves his aunt Titi, and she comes and like she just she lo and she loves to just play nonstop with him, and he's at that phase right now where that he just wants to go 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 play 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 nonstop until it's time to go to bed, and so she it was like the last two nights I've been like oh my god so <laughs> you get a break oh I get a break you know mm -hmm. and I and I always when you're going through that you're uh, you're trying to be mindful of that like there's gonna come a time where he's you're never human, yeah he's not he's gonna grow up and not want to play with me but there's times where it's like it is exhausting I come through the door by like three o'clock and he is like from that moment till he goes down like I am full and literally when we I go to the bathroom to break in between like that he's in the bathroom just. <laughs> yeah. you know, trying to hand the toilet paper to help me to speed me along stuff like that like, are, you, and are you done dad you almost done like yeah son i'm almost done give me a second here bro <laughs> that's hilarious yeah. Aure aurelius told uh his sister that she's like what do you want to be for halloween he's like i want to be papa i want to be papa for halloween yeah, i'm dude. like oh uh, man uh, yeah. but we did get him a costume he's, a, he's gonna uh, be a swamp monster how oh, you guys yeah. like swamp monster <laughs> yeah. oh i had so everett told me what he was gonna be this year and i was dying dude like him and it's funny because like he's he's kind of finding some other friends that, that are they have a good sense of humor as well and, and uh so they decided to be um not dumbledore but uh, gandalf and uh, Saruman. Oh, cool. So they're both going to be like old men, old like wizards. little old men wizards. Yeah. <laughs> and like, fight. I just think it's going to look absolutely ridiculous. And I was like, because originally he was going to be Dumbledore. And I was like, maybe I should be like Harry Potter. That would look really weird, you know, having a big old Harry Potter. Yeah. And like a <laughs> Are you going to dress up with them? Uh, well, we're gonna, well, be we're gone, gonna miss dude. it, bro. Oh, so uh, yeah, it's like a total that. bummer. Bro, I'm super bummed you know, about that. That's one of that. my favorite holidays. That's too. that's Max's holiday for we're sure. Do so here's the one he gets most. Wait, hold on. About. Let's talk about this right now. Here's what we're gonna do. You know they have that pumpkin patch in. Uh, I think there's one in Gilroy. There's some really big ones, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're planning on taking the kids there, dressing up and making it because we're not gonna be here beforehand. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We should all go. We okay. should take the kids and make yeah. It no, I'm I'm definitely down to. I mean, we have make our own Halloween, right? Because I'm way down to do that. Because Matt, I mean, that's a bummer for me. That's of all the holidays like he's i mean we watch halloween shit year round yeah. i mean that's his that's his jam is like halloween so to miss that and every year katrina and i have all got every year we've like gone yeah. over the top with our outfits with him like we've done something uh -huh. all of us together so i was i didn't even realize that that's when the trip was and i'm like fuck man we're gonna miss that i, I want well, hey, i want i want to tell you guys that uh you you probably use the red light the most right out of all I, of us yeah I, although i've been in because this is my red light here now yeah so I brought it so in. So I've been using it uh, now yeah, for- Yeah, uses mine all the time. I've I been using really it as much. Uh, maybe two months. The most consistent I've done. So probably three to four days a week. I'll, I'll, I'll put myself in front of it. Yeah. And uh, man, it's- yeah, Your skin looks really good. You can tell. It really- I can always tell when, when I've been- It like, really makes a difference. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, every time I use it, I could tell, but this is the most consistent I've done it. And um, I mean, it's- it's exceptional uh, what it does. Like my, I can really tell on my skin. I mean, I can see a difference like right after I, I get done with it. Yeah. I can, I feel like it has, it has like, I mean, you look like it right now. You have like this kind of glow to your skin. It's mm. weird how it, it sounds really weird for us to talk weird. like that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can hold not quite as not. much as that one yeah. time we were on the beach and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was high on mushrooms. <laughs> Justin, Justin looked at me all weird. Like, he goes, I got to tell you. Yeah, you yeah, see, yeah, you see like a halos around no, you? No, 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 listen, that, listen. Uh, the, 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 we were on the beach and Justin couldn't make eye contact with me. No. He kept so looking up and looking down. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I can't look at you. I'm like, why is it? He's <laughs> like, you're golden. I'm like, what? He's like, you're just golden. Was that the first time? He was we so had shiny, shiny, dude. That was the first yeah. time, wasn't it? Yeah. That was the very first time. He was yeah. like a golden yeah? pony. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I was watching the clouds and they were all making shapes. I'm like, this is great. And then I look at Sal and he's just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like this asshole. You know? But he didn't like, say it at first. At first, he was weird. I was like, just laughing. I was like, look at him, like laughing to myself because I'm the only one seeing this. See, yeah. I'm so mad that we haven't. This is the one part about being four dudes, right? That we have not documented all the places that we've stayed. Now, yeah. I mean, looking back, I mean, obviously when we were going through, like, oh, there's only been a few of them. But looking yeah. back now, eight years later, it's like there's so many places. And if you were to see, the, I, I, I can vaguely remember that house that was at. Uh, 
Is that Pajaro? Yeah, Pajaro. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was Pajaro yeah. Dunes, which yeah. we stayed there like three different Place times. Is great, yeah. So if we had like a hidden gem, a book, or an, you know a, that where we could go through and be like, oh, and that those memories will. Come you know what's back. gonna happen because we don't have pictures. Is the stories are gonna morph into? Like, yeah, I know. Myth. We yeah. do have some pictures. There's some pictures of that. We have a lot. Place, we have a lot. We just need to organize them together to where they're like that. Because what's going to happen, because we've, like, Paro Dunes, we've been that Paro Dunes at least three times, I think. We've stayed mm -hmm. out there to do programs and things. You know, you start to go, they start to blend together. It's like, oh, was that that one? Or yeah. was it? And so I wish we'd organize that and put that together. Well, so speaking of the chosen one, I'm, I'm sure you've already read this story okay. uh, or uh, uh, not story, study. Um, but I didn't know this. I don't know if you knew this, Adam, or not, but like, so uh, women, their eggs. Uh, so the, the common thought was that like you're you have one sperm that sort of like outcompetes and swims the fastest to yeah. get there first, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. then it, it penetrates. Um, but uh, what they found was that the the egg actually mm. selectively puts yeah. out like a signal and and tells which one specifically it wants to swim yeah. faster to get there. So oh, it's actually selecting. Uh, that sperm, so it's actually like predetermined in that sense. Listen, women, that's wild. Women, right? Are, women are the choosers, and they ha they are from the very beginning. Even their eggs are choosy. Yeah. They're they are the they women are put the most uh, evolutionary pressure um, uh, because they're the choosy ones, and this is just historically. See, now that makes me feel so weird about like. So we actually, it's funny you're bringing this up, Justin, because literally yesterday uh, Katrina had a consult with the fertility uh, doctor. And I, I mean, there's like, I don't know if you guys know, there's like a, a 10 different types of methods and things that they can do. Like they can do things where they're just, she just uses like uh, Clomid for a little bit, or she just uses HCG for a little bit, or you can do the like, like different levels of there's yeah, There's like all these yeah different <laughs> levels of intervention. And I'm really like, I mean, I, uh, where I'm at with it, with her is just like, whatever you want to do. Like I'm, yeah. I'm like, so whatever about it right now. Like I'm. Max is now at an age where originally I thought I wasn't going to want another one with the, the gap and stuff like that. Like, I love love having my son so much that thinking having the thought of another one sounds awesome. Even I even told her like I would even do the uh, uh, um, uh, artificial insemination where they chance yeah. high chances of twins. I was like, oh, I'll run three. Uh -huh. Let's do it. Like, oh shit! So oh, she's man. like, I'm like, full, don't get me excited. <laughs> I full one eighty on her on all that stuff. So I've been like, what? But. That, it, that it type happens, of stuff, like when, when we when we play God, I have I have I, I struggle with that. I don't know if that's my mm. my upbringing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Of like, I have more of the attitude. I've been this way with her, just like, well, hey, whatever listen, happens, happens. Whatever right? happens, yeah. happens, and then it's meant to be. Like it's it was. It was I don't know. There's always that line, right? Because it's like yeah. it's like that joke. What's that joke where the guy is like praying to win the lottery, prays to win the lottery, prays, and then he finally dies, and he goes up to heaven. And he's like, God, why didn't I win the lottery? And God's like, you gotta buy a ticket. Yeah. yeah. Take it first, yeah. Right? So yeah. maybe yeah, that's maybe that's take, the plan, yeah. right? The plan is for you to do that. <laughs> I know. Still getting chosen. I know. I, so you're. I mean, I think that's a total fair analogy to say that too. Like, because and the, obviously there's going to be people that are the purest to be like, that's not the way it was intended. Yeah. And it's like, but it's like, oh, well, you know, science has evolved and we have these tools and they have helped. I mean, I can think of all. I can think of several people who that has helped them change their life. They wouldn't have been able to get pregnant if it wasn't well, for science all, getting involved. And all helping I know them, is and that's the best thing ever that happened. If to them. my opinion matters anything, all I know is that you guys make phenomenal parents. So if you guys have a kid, however it is that it was supposed to be that way, you want to know something funny. You guys are exceptional parents. You want to know something funny along those lines. Uh, you know what really like, I think tipped me over It's so funny that this is the way it went down. And I, and I, this is how I told Katrinka. She's like, Oh my God, you're like so different about this now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and it was actually around the time we were we were uh, talking in the show and stuff about just how shitty the fucking world is and just oh, yeah. all the all the bad stuff and bad and, and I'm like, I actually felt this overwhelming like uh, almost I don't want to say a burden, but compelled that. You know, if we if we do believe that we're really good parents, right? That like put out some good people. I should put out good people. Yes. Like, instead of bitching about all yes. these bad people in the world and how shitty it all is, yes. like listen, if I if I take being a, a parent this seriously and I'm and I'm raising a really good fucking kid, maybe it's on me that I should do another one. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And another one. Like and so I had a real kind of shift on the way i was obviously thinking about all the selfish things originally which is well i don't want two kids with a gap and oh it's gonna be like this and all the things for me and i thought well Plus, okay max, if it, i'm sitting here saying that the world could be a better place and yeah. why don't i make better humans you know? and max is gonna be such a good older brother he's yeah. such a loving kid i think he'd be the best older brother 
Oh, yeah. yeah. So I hope you have a girl. Uh, yeah. So that's where we're at. We're I, need at have, I need to have another guy, another another girl dad in here, so I can we can you know. But I didn't realize how many <laughs> different um, like ways they can do this. Yeah, that, there's literally like ten different like oh, no. options that she's had, and Katrina's wanted to do the least that mess with her hormones. That's why she didn't even want to do our artificial insemination because they have to do all kinds of stuff with they her. They prep you with, uh, yeah. they have to get your you into a really, really fertile state. Yeah, and so she's like, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want that. Which, by the way, the person said like, you guys aren't, she goes, you guys aren't even really good candidates for that because those people normally can't produce good eggs or they don't have good sperm or they don't have a good sex life. She's like, none of those are you guys. You guys, you have all these, she has extremely healthy eggs. I have extremely healthy sperm. It's just not happening. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't happened. So it's like, oh, okay, well. Whatever you yeah. want to do. So she's like literally in the middle of yeah. making that decision today as we're talking. Oh, right wow. Now. So wow. we'll see, all right. All right. see what she good, decides. Good. Well, I, hey, real quick too. I mm. want to let you guys we'll know. Put it so out there. I know we got a bunch of z in the back. I'm going to be taking a few of them with me next week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and take uh, maybe five or six, not just for me. What? I don't, yeah, I don't use that many. Yeah. Calm but down. No, we're going to be meeting with um, Jessica's friends because her friend is turning 40. It's a big deal. Uh -huh. There's going to be a lot of people there, probably a lot of drinking. So I'm gonna take I'll take them and have everybody try out the Zbotics so they can see. Perfect. This is our works. this is our first commercial since they've been back, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. So I'm super excited about this. I don't know if I share this with you guys. It's just that uh, one of my favorite things that happens to us sometimes is when we have a partnership with somebody for a while. You're gonna talk about this. I am gonna talk a little bit of shit. So uh, <laughs> you know, we have partnerships with people, and you know, we take a lot of pride in, in doing really doing right by our partners, doing well. We're very selective about who we work with, and. Um, you know, I think do a good job. And sometimes people get so hung up on like, oh, well, you know, we want to try this. We want to do that. Or, oh, we think the ROI should be this. And we've now had this happen a couple of times where we're about a handful of times mm -hmm. where someone decides that like, oh, it's maybe it's not worth the investment to do it. And then they go off and they go test other waters and then they come back. You get a big Super Bowl commercial yeah. and uh, the Trinsolar soap yeah. uh, and other means, and, you know, <laughs> just, just, little, that kind of thing. He's a little salty. Yeah, a little, hey, so explain this real frustrating. quick, Adam, because I was having a conversation. I'm not going to say who it was because we know this person, but I was having a conversation with them and they were showing me well, you could spend, you know, a hundred dollars on a Facebook ad and That's get right. this much back. And this is the RI. And I tried to explain the value of podcasts. And I said, look, it's not just about the return. It's also about the brand recognition, the authenticity, like explain the difference. Cause it's not all the same. No, it's a massive difference. There's a, it's a difference between uh, a, a random ad that you have no connection, no listen hits you on a product that you want a good deal on and you just buy versus a podcast host who you've built a relationship with. I mean, how many times we have guests in the studio right now, we'll ask them how many times that you feel like you really know us, even though this is the first time we're meeting people in, in person, but because they've listened to us talk yeah. for years sometimes, have felt like they've built a relationship. They identify with what, maybe one of us or all of us in some manner. And so the loyalty that they, they have to us and then for us to talk about a brand like that is different than hitting, than hit just a random ad hitting like that. And so the, the power of that, like when you get it like a Facebook ad or any, a Google ad for that matter, or even a commercial on TV, a lot of time it, it hits an emotional response. You know, I was already shopping for those sunglasses. I like them anyways. And all of a sudden like this commercial hits and it's this, it's this reminder that triggers me right. like, Oh, I, I want to go buy those. And so it, it makes me go do that, but I don't have any loyalty to that brand. I don't have any like, Oh, Adam said to go right. do that. Or Sal said, like, there's none of that where you get that with podcasting. And that just creates a better customer. And that customer is is going to have a, a better uh, LTV than just a random person. LTV stands for lifetime value. Okay. So it, it's this is gonna this is gonna have so much more weight. And that's one of those things that's really hard to measure in the short term because a lot of these people that are doing advertising, they look at just direct ROI. Like, oh, it's like, well, I spent 10,000 on Facebook ads and we got back 20,000. I spent 10,000 mm -hmm. on your podcast and I only got 15,000. I'll argue all day for a couple of reasons too, that that 15,000 you got is more valuable because the type of customer that you got is, a, is the loyalty they have to us and now your brand is much higher than some random person. In addition to that, they've already done research on the buying behaviors around podcasting and almost 50% of people don't use URLs. I mean, how many so times- So it's have, way more than you think. That's right. So if you're getting a close to an even return, you can almost guarantee you're actually getting double that return yeah. because, I mean, I know I'm like this. Like, I don't know how many times I've bought a product because 
I heard a podcast host or a person that or I follow who I really like talk about a product. I didn't go like no. searching, looking up their forward slash back, you know, yeah. Susie. Yeah. yeah, I'm like just to, to save. And now some people are like that. Like I have friends that are like to save a dollar, they will scour the internet to find that deal mm -hmm. or that percentage mm -hmm. off. But most people aren't like that. Most people are like, if it's a product they're interested in or they like anyways, and somebody so, else talks so about it. So my opinion, this is just kind of circle back to how I opened the podcast, is uh, about misinformation, poor information. It's even more valuable. Even more now. To have people you trust because- you Can uh, like verify it for you. Yeah, yeah, because if you listen to us for a long time, you know that we don't bullshit. You know we're so honest that we've even said, hey, we like this product, but it tastes like crap. Yeah. Or hey, we like this, but here's- one of the negatives, or it's expensive. Like we're very honest, yeah. And we don't work with anybody we don't like. So even if you have a great product, if we don't like the owner and we don't like the people behind it, yeah. So you know you can trust us, and we're not going to mess that trust up. But that is more valuable these days because there's so much crap. Even that's out more there. to your point, what you're saying right now. I mean, think about this. We're at it. We're now at this time where you can't even trust a potential doctor or dietitian because. They've got they're they're lining their pockets and so they're gonna say things to manipulate the crazy bought and paid for. So that just shows you how much more valuable it is to have trust in a a brand or trust in a person who is going to recommend brands because it's going to get even more in that direction in the future. So I really mm -hmm. do think that the the podcasting space and advertising is going to continue what well, has it's the tr the trend has been almost doubling every single year it'll continue down that route because before you know it we're going to be so skeptical of ai and ads like you're not going to know what is you don't know if it's a made up yeah. ai generated doctor looking person spewing out all this information that a company we still have 100% human made on our logo yeah now, we right? do yeah yeah, I think it's actually funny, it. but so good. It's probably going to be like a real thing. In the That's day. why I said <laughs> yeah. organic uh, media will be a thing for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally, I totally believe that. Hey, I meant to ask you guys. Speaking of like, um, you know, internet influencer stuff, Sharon, our friend. Um, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, his name's gonna slip me right now, but it's not the point. I wanted to ask you, Sal. Uh, eggs for shampoo. Oh, that's an old thing. I didn't. I, didn't, I, I know who you're talking about, Saladino. Yes. Uh, eggs have been, the people have used eggs, milk, it's the fat and the cholesterol apparently supposed to be, help the high, the, the hair be shiny and whatever. That's an old thing, dude. I didn't know that. Yeah. But my mom did that. She told me she did that when she was a kid. They really? would use eggs. Yeah. And they put it in her hair and then they rinse it out. And yeah, I don't know who, wants, you want to put eggs in your hair? Yeah. And then like, I mean, you better wash it real good after yeah, that. You do. Yeah. It, you think it's hard to get out? Eggs? Well, I just would, I wouldn't want any leftovers in Watch, there Doug, the rest of the day. Doug, look up eggs for uh, eggs for healthy hair or eggs in your hair or eggs as shampoo. And That's is it, the, is it the whole, is it egg whites or the whole eggs? Yes. Nutrient rich hair, superfood, vitamin. Okay. So I want to buy it tonight. Say, uh, I, I don't know the math on this. It's in I, shampoo. I, Some shampoos will have egg in it. Hmm. I wonder how how reasonable it is to do that, like financially too. Like if you had, uh, like you know, what a shampoo bottle is worth yeah. of eggs. Oh, you just crack a real egg, and then I know, I know. But what I'm saying just is, one. is that it would doing eggs in replace of my shampoo cost me ten x. No, 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 no. Because no, no. you got to wash the eggs out. You can't just you put eggs in water. You still got to wash it out. I don't think you can leave the eggs and it comes. No, out you're saying no, 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 is it cost effective? Yes, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say, Sal. Yeah. I'm it not depends saying. on the brand of shampoo you buy, right? Yeah, yeah. if you well, get a high end shampoo, it's probably uh, similar. Yeah, well, what, 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 like let's compare it to middle of the row. Like what? Like how? Because we could. Easily I have no idea what shampoo costs, but I mean, twenty, thirty dollars a bottle, maybe. I would expect you to know more out of any of us. Why? Because he has the most nice hair out of oh, all yeah. of us. No, no, uh, Justin definitely he cares takes about that the hair. Yeah, yeah, I just, hide yeah it. this guy washes. His, <laughs> he washes, washes his it with dirt. dirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 he's the honest. last person I'm asking Not about. True. <laughs> so, so think about eggs. Depends on, of course, Slightly if you're using true. pasture raised eggs too. You yeah. know, but yeah. no, like how much are they a dozen? I mean, I know pasture raised are like what eight bucks a dozen. By the way, they used to put mayonnaise in their hair. Yeah, yeah, people eat mayonnaise, olive oil. It's I remember fat. my sisters did that. Yeah. They yeah. put egg in their hair. Yeah. So yeah. what it is, by the way, egg, your hair is not alive. Now, of course, the scalp is alive and the root and all that stuff. But the hair itself, uh, uh, fats coat this the fall the the hair itself, making it feel smoother and softer. Conditioner, by the way, attempts to copy this or mimic this. People think, oh, conditioner is healthy hair. No, really, what it does it coats the hair? If you look at hair under a microscope. It's got like these jagged edges, and what it does is it smooths it out smooths the jagged edges. Yeah, yeah, so it feels. Egg yolks can tell, contain lecithin, which that's in every shampoo, which is an emulsifier. It combines water, dirt, and oils from your hair 
then everything rinses out. Oh, I guess you don't have to use uh, shampoo. We think about it though. Most shampoos have a lot of you know chemicals in them. Yeah. So, that, so, so it's probably much healthier. The thing I want to get to the bottom yeah. here is if it's cost effective. Because if it's, I mean, okay, there, I think being all natural is a great, uh, great answer. But if it's like ridiculous yeah. and it's like, oh, do you on. use just straight soap on your head? Just question. Uh, no, I, I actually, well, I use my, my, my face, my caldera. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you don't wash it, your well, head? I do. But it's, I, but so when I do my caldera, yeah. what's the, the shower one? I was, the, what you wash yeah, it, yeah, I keep yeah. it in my shower. Oh, so, so it's I like just a do, face wash for your head. Yeah, I do the oh, whole, okay. I do the whole thing. Yeah. So okay. I don't know. I have to do that at some I don't point. know if that's a, the, I mean, the right strategy. to answer your question, Adam, I think if, you know, it's not that expensive. If you get some reasonably, uh, reasonably priced eggs, like yeah. Costco, I think, uh, a couple dozen of the, Free range or pasture raised eggs is like eight bucks. Huh. So that's a watch all these people. That's, that's, that's well, that's why I'm saying that if, if, it's, if it's somewhat cost effective, it's definitely natural and okay for you to do that. Like, I, why wouldn't you not mm. do something like that? Is that who you want to give a shout out to, Paul Saladino? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, we can. I mean, he's got so the much controversy around guy. him. Like, I like Paul. I think I think Paul's. A, 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 I don't agree with some of the stuff he says. Some of the stuff I do agree with, but yeah. I do think. Well, here's, here's he's got interesting. Here's my he's thought. Interesting here's my thought on on him, and this is what happens. I feel like when you decide you're going to pigeonhole yourself into like one method or one diet or one way, one modality of training. We see this in the fitness space around trainers that do this with, say, CrossFit or Orange Theory or. You you marry this ideology so much that then going forward, all of your content has to support your narrative. Yeah. And the inevitable is going to happen after years of creating content. You just get a little like, okay, bro, extreme. now you're yeah, extreme. Yeah. It's and it's stretch. like, and now it's a stretch and it's not realistic. And it's like, because I really like Paul. He's brilliant. And I think he has a lot of really good information. But when you say, oh, you know, you know, like the carnivore way of yeah. eating is fibers, right. fibers bad for you. Yeah. yeah. You say stuff like that. Yeah. Then you get, you, you get caught up in a, a place where it's like, okay, well, for some people, the information you're giving is going here's, to be life changing for them. But then for a, a large, here's who I think would be the perfect person to check them out. So the shout outs to Paul Saladino. If you have autoimmune issues that you just can't figure out what the hell's wrong. Yeah. What the hell's wrong? I have all these autoimmune issues. I seem to react to everything that I eat. Uh, I've got, it's unexplained. I've tried all the work. I've done the gut health stuff and I don't know what's going on. Check out Paul Saladino because there is a subset group of people who are like that. Michaela Peterson being one of them yeah. where the stuff that Paul talks about will be life changing. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Are you interested in hormone therapy? Do you want to balance out your hormones, work with a doctor? Uh, and are you also interested in maybe peptide therapy? There's a lot of peptides out there that do some pretty phenomenal things like boost growth hormone, help regulate your appetite, help with fat loss, muscle building, sleep, libido. It's an interesting space, but you want to work with a doctor. So here's what we did. We partnered with a company that works with doctors and pharmacies. It's all legit. It's all good stuff. Go get tested. Figure out if it's right for you. Go to mphormones.com. You can see if hormone therapy or peptide therapy is right for you. All right, back to the show. First question is from Brian Pata. Can you successfully bulk while only doing unilateral, unilateral leg work? I have this fear that if I bulk without heavy squats and deadlifts, the muscle gain won't be as substantial. However, I want to fix my hip shift. Love to hear your thoughts. Okay. So, Opposite is true. Yeah, well, you can bulk uh, with any strength training Anything. exercise. Yeah. Now, here's why you want to bulk when you're trying to balance things out. What you're trying to do is build strength and muscle in the weaker leg. Mm -hmm. The bulk is, going to help, uh, is only going to help um, that process. Now, here's the thing. Yes, squats and deadlifts are some of the best general muscle builders that exist, but there's always exceptions, and I'll give you one right now. If you have a big imbalance and you've been squatting and deadlifting for a long time, your body has now adjusted to this imbalance. And when you address the imbalance, you will send a new novel muscle building signal that's probably going to build more muscle on you. Yeah. And if it doesn't in the unilateral work, it definitely will when you go back to the bilateral work after you've corrected the issue. So this is all part of the same process. And a bulk is, is going to be more beneficial anyway uh, for the reasons I said. I'll make yeah. another case for it. I mean, if you are a consistent lifter and you almost always or have always into this point done bilateral squatting, simply going unilateral for the first time in your weightlifting career yeah. or, you know. It's a novel stimulus. is a novel stimulus. And you may, arguably may pack on more muscle. Right. So there's huge value to doing this. And and and, I, and the point you made about, 
uh, in a in a bulk is like this is the time that I, I would not want. Yeah, why would you want to put a cut to try to balance out your? Strength? Yeah, no. If yeah. a client came to me and, and the strength focus, the main the focus day. was to to balance our body out, and we had we had a pretty good discrepancy from left to right. And we're like, okay, we're going to do all this unilateral work. I would want them at least on a maintenance to surplus. I would mm -hmm. not want them in a deficit. Uh -huh. That's only going to be that much more challenging for us to, to balance it out. Anytime I'm trying to work in on, on strength, like I want to make sure that I'm feeding myself adequately so that way I give my body the opportunity to work on refining that strength. Uh, and st I mean, there's times to go on, on a deficit, but uh, in terms of like – you focusing on building up that muscle, like that muscle is going to need those building materials. Yeah, generally speaking, generally speaking, um, the only reason why you go on a calorie deficit is to get leaner. Right. When it comes to any type of improvement in performance or strength or muscle or balance, which is a component of strength, you want to have enough nutrients, enough calories to feed that process. So if your goal is to balance out your right to left because – my God, my right leg is so much weaker than my left or my knee caves in. Or I noticed like in this case, I have a hip shift. I want to balance this out. Well, if you want to make the process harder for yourself or almost impossible, you're going to go into cut or you're not going to eat in a, in a surplus. Eating in a surplus means you're eating more calories and nutrients than your body needs to stay the same. But that's the point. You don't want to stay the same. You want to gain strength. You want to gain muscle. So uh, I guess the, the next question would be how much of a bulk? Well, you, you, to, to balance yourself out, you don't need to be in a massive bulk. I would be in a, if you want to maintain whatever body fat percentage you're at, a slight bulk will be enough yeah. to feed this process. By the way, we had an example like this. You remember we did, we did that episode where that girl called in and she did the DEXA scan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it showed uh, right to, because DEXA scans can get real specific. Like you have this much lean body mass in your right arm yeah, and your left super arm. super cool. She did MAP Symmetry, which is our unilateral program. And she built significant muscle, but it all went to the sides that were smaller and weaker than the stronger sides. So awesome. I'll argue that if she did bilateral work, that wouldn't happen. No. Mm -hmm. Because she was so good. Almost at, guaranteed it wouldn't happen. That's right. Yeah. So in essence, she gained more muscle going unilateral than she would have going bilateral, all things being equal. And well, now coming back to bilateral, watch what happens. Crush. Yeah. Now what might have happened to her is, is she built the same amount of muscle, but the discrepancy would have stayed the same. Yeah. So if she, yeah. let's say she put on That's a, best case a total of yeah. four pounds of so, muscle, yeah. she still probably would have built four pounds of muscle from training well and eating in a surplus, but it still would have kept the, the imbalance might have been even greater. At That's that point. Yeah, what yeah. I would argue. Yeah. What I would argue is that greater or at least the same. Right. Right. Absolutely. I think sometimes even greater because yeah. you get better at training. Well, so strong it would pull a lot of the attention. That's I would right. Imagine. Next question is from Haley Lily Clive. When I deadlift, my right knee caves in slightly when pulling up. Are there any correctional or mobility exercises to correct this? Here's an easy one. I'll give you an easy, because we can get real specific um, and targeted, and we will. We'll talk about more specific movements for hip strength and stability, mobility. This may mm. be due to the ankle as well. Yeah. But I'll give you something that's kind of easy, okay? If one of your knees is going in, what you want to do is give yourself something that's going to give you feedback so you have to push your knee out while you do the exercise. Very basic way to apply correctional exercise. So what does this look like? Well, let's say my right knee is going in towards the center when I deadlift. I would attach a band around my right knee so that I have to push my right knee out to maintain tension. That way, when I do the deadlift, not only am I deadlifting, but I'm also conscious of pushing my knee out against the band and strengthening the muscle that seems to be too weak, that seems to be causing the knee to cave in. Now, the reason why that's general is although that may on the surface, correct the issue. There still may be a root problem I'm not addressing. I may be strengthening my hip abductors. Those are the muscles that pull my knee out, but I may not be addressing that. Maybe it's an ankle issue yeah. that's causing it. So I may be causing a better or creating a better compensation, which is okay and better than what it was before, but not necessarily ideal. But in this case, and in many cases, this is a very general thing people could do. Uh, add a little bit of resistance in the direction that you think you need to go and do the same exercise and that that generally will help the reason people. why that's such good general advice is it, it indirectly is going to support support what i would say is the most common thing here it's almost always weak feet weak hips going yeah. on if you have a band distraction on that knee the feet are going to have to activate yeah to try and help work pushing the knee out the knee being pushed out is also going to activate the hip so you're going to get the benefits of strengthening the hip 
and the feet by indirectly doing the band distraction that you're talking about. But almost always when this happens, it's, and this is, by the way, this is like a, was like a mind blowing thing for me to, to figure all this out through Dr. Brink, because uh, for as long as I've been doing this, like I just like, ignored the the feet and what a huge role they played in all this mm -hmm. breakdown, uh, you know, like a squat like this. And when a lot of times when someone has a knee caving in is their foot's pronating, right? So their, their foot pronates, the knee caves, the, the femur internally rotates. So that's what's happening all the way up. The, and if you think about that, the femur is internally rotating because it doesn't have the, the strength and mobility to hold it in the position it's supposed to be. The knee caves in because the foot is pronating yeah. and collapsing in. So all of it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. The exercise that you're talking about does a pretty good job. Now, my advice would be, to work on things like it's not surgical it's very general yeah right? but I, I mean it would be what you suggested would be in my arsenal of things yeah, that i would do 90 90s yeah. but i'm doing 90 90s for the hips mm -hmm. right so I'm, I'm doing all the the 90 90 progressions that we have on the youtube channel mm -hmm. so do that stuff and then i'm doing a lot of foot and ankle yeah, stuff i'm gonna yeah. do uh short foot yeah uh, i'm gonna do um what's it called uh what's the ankle one that you like to combat do? Oh, combat mm -hmm. um stretch on my ankle um, and, and then I'm going to do the band distraction. Those yep. are the things that I would address. You want to hear how terrible of a trainer I was when I first started, by the way, <laughs> you probably yes. would squeeze the basketball. Like I did. Yeah. I, would, <laughs> I would stop the knee. Yeah. I would yeah, stop the knee from so coming weird. in yeah. by putting something between yes, the knees put a basketball or putting a so band dumb. in the opposite uh, direction to hold it out. <laughs> not knowing that what I'm actually doing is, yeah. is uh, caught is making them strengthen the, the imbalance. Same. I would have done the same. It's a, yeah, maybe it would. I would have put like a hip circle around the knee. So at least one of them, but then I'm getting both. And yeah. Now I'm like overcompensating and yeah. then it's not even doing anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there you go. For half the stuff that I used to do. <laughs> I to say I yeah. You get smarter over the Sorry. years. <laughs> Next question is from Jay Bissett 72. My 13 year old son wants to start working out to get bigger, faster, and stronger. Would a three times a week full body workout or a six times per week split be better? I'm going to just say this straight up. Okay. For 85%, okay, the vast majority of people listening to this, watching this, or 85% of the population out there who wants to build strength, build muscle, get faster as a result, right? Just bigger, faster, stronger. A three-day-a-week full-body routine will be superior to a six-day split. That's 85%. You talk to strength coaches, you talk to bodybuilding coaches, and yes, there's that 15% where the volume gets so high that splitting it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the vast majority of people out there, a three-day-a-week full-body routine is perfect. It's best. It's not perfect. It's best. It is best. It's <laughs> it, it's best for more than just uh, the, the the most basic of reasons. Like When they when they test this head-to-head, -head, it's like almost identical, right? If all things are created equal and it's perfect, volume's equated for everything like that, it's like they're pretty damn close. But the thing that you always hear us talk about on the show is like the behavioral stuff. And I think one of the, the reasons why I think full body is superior in, in all aspects for all people is because I've never met anybody. I've never had a client in my life that is perfect year round all the time and doesn't have life happening and these these up and downs of, of consistency and the not so consistent. And when you're running a full body routine, and you have a bad week, and you only got to the gym once or twice. You still hit the full body. You still hit the yeah. full body. Yep. So you are still staying very balanced. You're still getting all those muscles stimulated. You're not going to take big steps and fall backwards. What most what happens to people that do splits, okay, me mm -hmm. included, as I ran splits for most of my life, is those weeks always happen. And I have a, a week where I miss a day. And then I'm like, oh, well, I missed a muscle group. And it's always the muscle group I don't like doing anyways. Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah, they're going to naturally avoid it. Yes. And it's the other thing about like young kids like this too, that uh, you, you present them with like a specific muscle group to target. They're going to overdo the hell out of it. Yes. Now. And then it's going to be a detriment at that point for them coming back, having to do, you know, the next workout or the next few days from then that same muscle group again. And so, you know, you have to kind of like put that on perspective, like how, how consistent are they going to be with this plan and this program? Uh, and then how are they, how are they going to adequately recover from this? Yeah. And I'm going to, I'll make this argument too. Let's say you took, uh, the same routine, three full body workouts, or you cut all of them in half. Even that's usually not how six, uh, you know, day a week splits work, but let's just say it is you cut them all in half, six days versus three. I'll argue that you get better recovery and adaptation for most people because of the full days of rest. 
So I, I think it's better to have a full day of training and a day off and a full day of training, and a day off versus half a day of training, half a day of training, half yeah. a day of training, half a day of training, because you tend to adapt and recover better. Now, at some point, if you become so advanced, you've got incredible recovery, you're so consistent, you're eating good that now your full body workout is two hours long because I'm doing three exercises per body part. Well, now it starts to make sense to well, split it up. But for most people, I'm also going to make an argument from an athletic standpoint that body part splits are dog shit for athletes. Yeah. You're, you're compartmentalizing the body. Your body needs to work in unison. You'll you never do that in the sport. body. You'll never do that. Yeah. So it's pick one, right? Like you can look like an Adonis or whatever. And like, that's like your thing, right? I want to look like a specimen or if I want to be an athlete, you want to be faster. You want to be stronger and faster. You got to be an athlete and you got to train like, yeah, an athlete. but I'll yeah. make this argument, Justin. I, I've obviously been trained forever. My own body. I always, the, the most consistent, the routine that I tend to follow the most is the three-day-a-week one. And it's always the best one for me. Now, I switch out because it's a good idea to switch into different things. It's always a good idea, especially if you've been working out for years and years and years, Yeah, like I have. But whenever I go back to three days a week, I feel the, mo the most rested, I have the most strength, and my body responds the best. And everybody I've ever trained, like I said, there's a vast majority just do best. This is most people. So uh, regardless of... If it's your 13 year old son or your 43 year old, you know, friend or whatever. Regardless, but I think even more so because of that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Start like, them if, off on if, the right if foot. Uh, this person uh, were asking a question and you're a 27 year old consistent bodybuilder guy and you don't ever miss sure. a gym and you've been sure. training for 10 years, uh, I might be like, well, whatever. Whatever you like most yeah. and is going to keep you consistent, then go for it. It's not that big of a difference. But you talk about a 13 year old kid. Uh, the fact that I agree that, it, that most should do this and will get benefits from it, but even more so, a young a young kid getting started in his totally. career, full body for sure would be. I wish I understood but, this as as a young kid. Because, oh my god, are you same, kidding me? I, yeah. I, I, someone told me to do this, and I thought they were lying. I tell you what, by the way, one one other thing, if you're listening to this, if your son eats his body weight in protein and grams, eats enough calories, and follows this. He's going to get, He'll get big. stronger, bigger, and faster very quickly. He will see significant results. He just has to apply those and get good sleep. If he does all those things, his, got, his body's going to respond very well. Next question is from Ruth Cadell. What are your thoughts on eating candy intra workout? It's oh delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Where, it's been a long time since we've seen Dr. Integrity. Oh, yeah. God. Is he still around? What is Actually, it now? Yeah, he's around. He, I, we used to get, I used to get hit with his ads all the time. I never see him anymore. I think he yeah. blocked us from everything. Oh, maybe that's why. Yeah. Oh. So it, it was like the dextrose, right? So you had like the gummy bears or the pixie sticks and like that was the big thing okay. for a long time. Here's the deal. Look, if you're, if you're it's training. a terrible idea for so many reasons. If you're training yeah. super, super long and you're depleting your glycogen, which by the way, you have in your body. I don't know, five or six thousand calories yeah. worth of stored glycogen. There's a lot of stored glycogen. Okay, but let's say you 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 you're, you're doing a crazy long workout, and it's like and these are endurance workouts typically, and you're exhausting yourself. Then the data does show that consuming some carbohydrates, okay, which yeah, candy does have carbohydrates, so I guess technically it's in this category. Although I'll make the argument that candy's the worst; it's not a great option anyway. But having some carbohydrates that are easy to digest in your workout is going to be beneficial. Who does this apply to? Endurance athletes. Yep. Endurance athletes are the people that I recommend have a carbohydrate drink or those cubes or those gels, you know, halfway through their three hour training yeah, they're session. They're burning up the most calories. Yeah. If you're like training in the gym, you're lifting, even if you're lifting hard and you're eating candy in between sets to fuel your workout, you better be like, this better be the most insane workout I've ever seen well, in my entire life. Okay. There, there's, there's one client Okay, that I can that I think of that I would allow to, even though I wouldn't recommend, uh, but I would allow them if they said like, "Hey, could I do this?" Is the client the young kid who is burning so many calories, struggling so much to put weight on that we're looking for any place to get extra calories yeah. that we want? <laughs> yeah. And he goes, "Adam, like, I, I love having gummy bears in the middle of my workout. I'm like, I right, go for it. You know what I'm saying <laughs> we can't we can't seem to hit your calorie surplus as it is. Right. So eating some sugar in the middle of your workout, like I'm not really tripping. That's yeah. the only person 
that I'm even allowing. And even then, I'm like, you there's, know, well, there's, there's better, better options still. There's better but, yeah. stuff, and that that means you better be hitting your protein intake consistently if you're and and not just hitting your and it's just your calories you're missing. Because then I'd rather have a a drink, a protein shake in the middle of your workout that I get twenty to thirty grams of protein plus some of the sugar. So. Mm. It, the only person I see this with is someone who hits their protein consistently, has a roaring metabolism, struggles to get to the calories they need to because they're so active. Okay, go for it. I don't care. Yeah, this annoys me because it comes from the muscle building space that's so uh, – they like to push the limits of what they can get away with. Mm -hmm because they're so shredded and jacked. And so like, I eat candy in between, or it's a fast as, you know, absorbing form of carbohydrates or, you know, whatever. It's like, okay, um, there's, there's better options and no, you don't need to do that. Like you, unless you're working out for hours with crazy endurance, the, the data is clear on this. You do your typical hour strength training, unless you're super depleted going into it, it's not going to help you. It's not going to make a, a difference with your strength training or part, your results. Part of the reason why it got popular. I mean, I, as a, when I went through the whole kick, when I was doing all this stuff, like I played around with all the trends that everybody was doing yeah. just because I wanted to experience it and mm -hmm. talk about it. And what you get from pop tarts before your workout, gummy bears in the middle of your workout, uh, for the bodybuilder person is you get this like quick pump, you get a pump mm. that sugar gets into your system really fast in comparison to the, and th let me tell you what I've, you've heard me on this podcast talk about, like I had figured out like the amount of grams of carbohydrates I needed, like the perfect, like yeah. the perfect meal that I would have like an hour and a half before I went to go get my lift in. Like I figured out like through whole foods, like what was the perfect best workout, best everything. But if I didn't do that and I'm going in to go do a workout, and so let's say, let's just use the numbers for my, me personally to get, to get this point across. I've, uh, you know, it was somewhere between 70 to 90 grams of carbs I wanted going into my workout to feel these. And this was like, an, like a couple hours before. Yes. Okay. Yeah. To feel like this, this, this massive pump. If for some reason I was low calorie that day and I'm getting ready to go to that workout, if I crushed two Pop Tarts, I would feel. It, I would feel it in my workout. I would right. feel the pump. I would definitely have more than if I would have not done that. Uh, now, one of the biggest problems that I found with when I when I was started messing with this stuff like that is I started to crave those things all the time, mm -hmm. regardless if I had. Already, so then I'd have another day where I so I would allow myself to do this consistently on these days, and then I'd have a day where I actually did everything I was supposed to eat a balanced meal, then have the other meal that was perfect for me. And then I'm getting ready to do my workout. And I had trained myself that behavior of it's slamming poppers. Now I'm over over consuming, yeah. not getting any extra benefits from it. And I've got this damn craving for these stupid pop tarts. So it's you it's a, if you're going to do something like this, you, you got to be very careful on what comes with uh, allowing yourself to have something like that in the diet. And like I said, the only person I would maybe allow do that is that that kid who just struggles to put weight on. And right now that's not a big focus of us of over consuming because I can't ever get him to hit his calories. Yeah. But this is not the first thing you say, right? No, it's not. It's not oh, you can't eat enough calories. Let's no, throw some candy. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to try it. I mean, it's literally, like I said, if he came to me exactly. and he's like, Hey bro, this is what I'm doing. I'm like, all right, whatever, you know, but I, I would even go for a sports drink before I do candy. So that's what I did. I didn't remember. I uh -huh. talked about this. I used to do rock stars. Like before I played basketball, Full sugar, I, yeah, yeah, star, yeah. yeah, that's what I would just do right before I would, I would go in it again, not something I would recommend to most people. A very, very specific case and person is that I'm allowing to do some of this. Cool. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. We have a lot of fitness guides. They're all free. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 